Wood, CSO of American Fire and Security. Um, Erica, as you may recognize her, is the security girl in her avid dire, and as you can probably already tell, she is a pro at social media in the security industry. Um, Erica is speaking at a session at ESX offered on Thursday, and is called Setting Up Social Media Programs That Deliver Real Results. Erica, tell me how you got started in the industry with your husband. Um, well, when I first started dating my husband, um, he owned a security guard and patrol service business. Okay. Um, we had a lot of accounts, a lot of the 24-7 weekend kind of, anyone that's been in the security guard business, they know that it was a headache. <laughs> I, I love it. We still help people with security stuff, but it was a headache. Um, around the 2000s when security cameras and stuff became more reasonably priced mm -hmm. which looking at those prices now compared to today's prices really kind of make me giggle because they're much more affordable <laughs> and way better quality um, I told my husband I was like man if we don't if we don't change what we're doing we're gonna be working for someone else that's gonna be changing the industry and it's not gonna be us mm -hmm. so we started getting into electronic stuff a lot more than what we were before we'd always done alarms but we really started like just digging into it, adding like, I think we added cameras first and then we went into fire and we just kept adding on stuff. We'd mm -hmm. go get trained, add on and add on and we went a little nuts and still are going nuts <laughs> with it um, because it's a never like ending industry really if you think about it. That's great. Right. Yeah. Um, so about five years ago I said, I really want to change the name of the company. I want to have it really focus more on what we're doing and et cetera, et cetera. So I changed the name to American Fire and Security, bought out my husband's company. And he said, okay, honey. He said, sure, good luck with this. <laughs> and I, I, I hope today that he's really happy that I, yeah. I really got excited about all of the changes in the industry. Absolutely. And how did you take that brand and morph it into what it is now? Not only just the offerings that you added, but how did you change the brand message and the way you were marketing to your customers? Well, um, our security guard and patrol service company name was Marshall Protective Agency. Okay. So when I went out and I tried to sell electronic stuff, people were like, we don't get it. What are you protecting? They, they knew locally our brand as kind of the cop car look, with the cop car, right. with the cop like outfits. Mm -hmm. And so when I changed it to American Fire and Security, people immediately were like, so you do fire and security. Like, just changing the name made a huge difference in my marketing efforts when we were going out and talking to people and whatever. Right, right. Like something so simple. So what do you do to market the company? What are we talking? We're talking trifold brochures, advertising campaigns. Um, no, I don't really do any of that. And that probably sounds horrible because I know a lot of people spend a lot of money doing that. We mm -hmm. have a um, kind of a, they call it a rat card that basically just has bullet points with what we do, how we can help our commercial customers especially. Right. Um, that's the only thing I give them. We used to spend a lot of money on brochures and on leaflets and pamphlets and I realized that people weren't really reading it anyways. And now people really, if they want to know more, they just go to our website. So right. What's the point in you know spending all of that time and money doing that stuff? So when we advertise, we do a lot of obviously face to face, a lot of networking, but we also do a lot of social media advertising to get that same word out, and that's really just as effective and a lot cheaper than, <laughs> than actually doing all of these pamphlets Saving and brochures and whatever. Exactly. So let's get down to the beef of it. Your course. What can people walk away with knowing about social media that they probably didn't know coming in? Well, and I kind of want to make the class to be like accessible for everyone. I mean, mm -hmm. the class that I taught here, people, we had people that are very avid users of social media and we had people that had never, like they've thought about it, they've heard of it, but they've never used it. Mm -hmm. So you're really going to be able to kind of expect not the same content, but you're going to be able to be walked through on what to expect and how to start. And if you're already started, maybe where you should go and what you should do and how often you should be doing it. I mean, those are questions that people want to know the answer to. Right. And it's it's not a super scientific method on how to do it, but you just have to commit to it. So right. I'm really hoping that people will be able to walk away with kind of an understanding of, of how that type of marketing works for the right. business. How many hours would you say a week do you dedicate to social media for the company? Somewhere between five and eight hours a week. Um, 
it's not a whole lot. I maybe spend 45 minutes a day. Okay. Um, and what are the messaging you're pushing out? You know, it depends. I give tips, tips and tricks on, I don't know, right now it's cold weather driving. We're in Ohio and apparently they've got a lot of snow up there. So <laughs> I'm from Boston, so, so same thing. So I'm giving out these, these safe driving tips. I'm telling people about our products. I kind of just do a mix of messages because if you make it sales all the time, people don't want to be sold to every day all of the time. They right. want they want some value from that. So mm -hmm. you have to figure out what your excuse me, what your value is mm -hmm. and how you can really help out whoever you're trying to reach. Mm -hmm. So when you started, when did you get to that tipping point where people are actually um, commenting on what you say and liking what you say and sharing what you say? Because you know, for some people, we're posting, we're posting, we're posing, and how do we know that it's getting read, one, right. and two, that they're liking the content so that we know what to post and what not to post? The moment that I really knew that it was kind of starting to be successful mm -hmm. was when people were coming up to me, like at networking events, saying that they were reading the post and they wanted to know more. You're the it, security girl. Yeah, yeah it wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't about what I was posting or people retweeting. It was about people knowing our brand and knowing who we were. So, um, for example, over a couple weekends ago, we did a home show and I was advertising. Literally, it seemed like more than I should have been. Come demo our, our system at the home show. You know, come get your hands on it. Blah, 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 blah. And we counted, I don't know, somewhere around 30 or 40 people that came up because they saw that. They never retweeted it. They never replied. But they came in and said, hey, you said that you'd give us a demo on social media. So it sounds like you've got some great, uh, really usable advice for people when it comes to social media, getting their brand out there, and starting to have conversations with people rather than just screaming your message at the audience. Right. Right. Well, that's my hope, at least. <laughs> so. <laughs> so if you'd like to register for Erica's class, you can go ahead and go to www.esxweb.com. Thank you so much for spending oh, time thanks. with us, Erica. Thanks. I hope to see you all in Nashville.